when they were done, they opened the door. I'm like, hey. Oh my god. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hafiz. Hello, I'm Chow. Hi, I'm Leah, and this is Zula Chicken. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a chick. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Chick Chat and in today's episode we're going to be talking about staying in hall in university So which uni were you from and which hall were you guys from? I was from NTU and Hall 12 I was from NTU also, from the best hall, Hall 16 Wow, wow, wow. competitive! Hall 12. <laughs> I was in NUS, I am in NUS <laughs> and I lived in KR and N House So for me, I stayed in residential college So it's somewhat like a hall but it's in New Town yeah, and they have their own program. I stay in campus too. Yeah. That's so, where all the nerds are at. Mm, fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's but true, the, nerds, the nerds are cool. The nerds are real cool. So moving on, let's talk about your own personal hall experience. So what are like rooms you stay in and also like do you have any like stories to share about like roommates or like horror stories in hall? Uh, I stayed in a double room. So for NT, I think it's good because you can actually choose your roomie before you go in. Oh. So thankfully, I chose like my friend and we are still friends. Uh. Because having a roommate, mm-hmm. right, your dynamic with them completely changes. Yeah. Yeah. It's test the friendship. Right? There are stories of people who like stop being friends with their uh-huh. roomies. For my first two years, I stayed a roommate, and then uh, in my remaining time in hall, I stayed in a single room. So yeah. you like single or double better? I enjoy staying in a double room because I always had a roommate, and it didn't get very lonely. La. On the other hand, a single room is great also because like things can go my way easier <laughs> like in terms of the clean up in terms of mm. uh, access to my room mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> access to my room yeah, yeah. yeah so you know you know yeah I feel like there's Sim- some hidden <laughs> message behind all these <laughs> I lived in Cambridge for one year year one sem two and year two sem one and then when I did NOC that was year two sem two and that was when I stayed in PGP. I lived in a single room because mm. they only have single rooms. And then in the evening when the the sun just shines through my windows. Wow, the room sounds nice. I can live there. <laughs> Super nice. And then I had all these fake flowers. Mm. Mm. I stuck them around my bed frame. Mm. So like it was just Whoa. the dreamiest room I ever had. I think for me I had the best of both worlds, like which is a single room but also having the company of other people because I stay in a suite that has like a shared common area but you cannot choose your suite mates yeah so you just hang sway whether you get good roommates or not for my first year the roommates I stayed with all seniors so we were just like hi bye but I was very very lucky when I was year 2 all people that I could click with so they're still my closest friends up to now and then like two of them were exchange students who I still keep in contact with do you have any uh, juicy roommate gossip stories to share? I know of this couple <laughs> that always appears in oh my, my friend's IG story. Seven p.m. or something, they will be outside the door. So they always huh? like, wake up for like I think a good five minutes before they go into the room. Oh my god! But actually, building on that, right? It's like the seeing into other yeah. buildings. Because, okay, so RC is like the buildings are all built very near each other, like HDBs, right? Mm. So if you're on the top floor of this RC, you can look down into the lower floor of another mm. RC. People don't realize <laughs> that, and then they leave their blinds open. So my friend one time he was like, "Guys, I looked out my window and I just saw this." couple having sex. I was like, what? <laughs> and then he was like, everybody's oh talking God. about it in the chat and it's damn bad. Cause like, how do you oh. tell them also, right? Guys, just be aware and close your blinds. I think it's a very important rule. I didn't see anything with my own eyes, mm. but that's what I heard. I think the walls are quite thin. Mm. The walls oh. are thin. Yeah. Yes. So when people study too hard, you know, sometimes it can be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> when they study, what? This thing damn yeah. hard. Damn, damn really hard. Damn hard. hard. Damn hard. Damn, like, oh. I get what you mean by thin walls. It was my friend's room. I walked past her door and then I heard like, mm. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> <Hold up. laughs> then I put my ear. <laughs> then I, <laughs> I stood with my door open. Then I leaned against the door frame like that. Wait for them. How long so are you waiting? <laughs> <laughs> this girl that creepy ah. <laughs> then, then when they were done, they opened the door and like, hey. <laughs> Yeah. So moving on to hall activities, what are some of the activities that you guys participated in? So the way it works in halls, at least for NUS, is that if you want to stay on, you need to accumulate points. And to accumulate mm-hmm. points, you need to participate in events, functions run by either your block or your hall. Mm. So I didn't join anything. 
I'm not particularly proud about it because yeah. I feel like hall is a great way to pick up new things and new skills, which mm. I didn't get to experience for myself because I was very busy working beyond school, so I couldn't really accumulate points. But because I spent a lot of time with my blockmates, uh, they helped me to stay on for the next semester. So I think for RC, we have the same things, but we call them like interest groups, at least in terms of so. One of the groups that I think my friend started was Tea Freedom, which is an LGBTQ plus mm. uh, group that supports a lot of the LGBTQ plus people in the hall itself, in Tembuso itself. That's something that I feel makes Tembuso a little bit different yeah. in, in terms of like what we offer. Mm. I spent a lot of time in NUS dance. So like the club, the NUS club itself. The biggest thing that I did was to take my hall dance. At the start of the year, there will be a dance competition where all halls will compete together. So that was really fun. And also, I think hall is a very good place actually to try something we've never tried before. Like in terms of uh, commitments and goals, I joined as a group leader for orientation camp. I was also in the hall committee. Something I like about NTU is we have this thing called IHG. Mm. So it's oh, inter-hall yeah. games. games. And there are like a lot of different kind of sports yeah. and, and like uh, recreational activities. What is your biggest culture shock when you entered hall? Huh. For hall, there's like a shared pantry, right? And then that's <laughs> where right, you realize some people are super gross. We have microwave ovens and there are stories of people who use the oven as like to dry their socks. Eee. <laughs> Pro tip, if you stay in the older halls, please don't use the microwave oven. <laughs> Sometimes even at the urinal, it's quite high, right? Mm. Sometimes it's like dripping here on top. I don't, know how, I, don't know, I don't know how it got there. I think the biggest culture shock for me, right, was the partying culture. Mm. Especially at the start of the mm. semester. True. Then they are just always like, you wanna go out for drinks, you wanna drink in my room. Even though it is strictly banned, Mm. and people get into so much trouble mm. and they started to clamp down very strongly towards the end of my whole stay lah. Yeah. Oh, also the sex culture. So I heard of how there are WhatsApp chats in mm. hall that are just for hookups. It's yeah. a rumor. Nobody has actually seen Ooh. the chat. Oh, you have? Anyway. Oh okay! <laughs> I have not seen the chat, yeah. but um, you know, little birdies yeah. that have uh, yeah. told us about these things. Don't give in the peer pressure. If people around you are, are doing things that you don't believe in, don't do it. Yeah. Just be your own person. I don't know about NU, but I know like in NUS, like, if something happens, like, what, the whole hall know about it like the next day, that kind of thing. Just be aware of like your actions. Or... Yeah. What is your biggest takeaway from staying in hall? I think although there's a lot of like, weird stories about hall and weird things that's going on, I still really enjoy my stay. Because it really gave me a chance to like learn how to live on my own. And another big takeaway is definitely the friends that I've made. Because there are people who have seen you at your worst. There are people who you can just randomly knock at the door uh, and then go inside to talk if you feel down or anything. I think the biggest takeaway for me will also be my friends. These are the people who have been there for you like, because they are so accessible and at the same yeah. time they are also very like... I would say very like-minded lah in a way. Yeah. Independence is one of the biggest takeaways that mm. you're gonna get because for the first time in my life I had a place to call my own and everything that was within this little space, right, belonged to me and it felt so good. It inspired me to want to work towards that again to someday be able to look at a place and say that I own this place. The biggest takeaway for me <laughs> is that staying in RC or even hall, right, made my whole uni experience a lot easier. Yeah, because I had something to go back to all the time after like a very long day of classes and like friends who can uh, kind of empathize with what I'm going through. Yeah. And also the second thing I think it's a lot about taking initiative and learning how to like start up your own projects and lead your own projects in the hall. Yeah, because a lot of times you don't have the opportunity to do that outside. So last question will be uh, any advice to the fellow people who are entering <laughs> hall in August? I think anything like what they mentioned before, stay true to yourself. But mm -hmm. I think still go inside with a very open mind. Yeah. Because there's a lot of new experiences you're going to enter into. There's a lot of new things you can try, new things you can make. So I think it's going to be a very exciting time yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with whatever she has said. Remember to have fun so mm -hmm. Yeah, because like some people they just go they just like have hall to just study or like as a place for them to rest after school and whatnot. But they sometimes forget about the fun aspect of, of uni life. While you're having fun, I feel like the fun element can people might overemphasize on that sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. So like those who get very into all the activities and it might become very overwhelming for you. And just find your support system. Mm -hmm know who you can rely on and who you can talk through all your struggles with and it will help you a lot through your new journey. I think my uh, biggest advice is prioritize your time. 
because that's something a lot of people don't realize. Because you know that whole triangle, everyone like you want to study, sleep, and social life. Then people always choose just study and social life, and then they don't like get enough time for themselves. I think that is something very important. Don't lose yourself in hall. Prioritizing your own mental health is key to having a great life, right? Yeah. Today we talked about hall culture, and we learned that as long as you stay true to yourself, you're gonna enjoy everything and your new experiences. So if you guys like this video, remember to leave a comment down below and also let us know what else to talk about next time. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! Bye. Chick chick chats. Chick chats.